All right, good morning, class. We're going to go over uh, 2.3 deductive reasoning. We're going to talk about two laws, law of detachment and law of syllogism. So we're going to use deductive reasoning, and uh, previously we used inductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning is looking at a pattern and then drawing a conclusion based upon what you observe. Deductive reasoning is we're going to use logic uh, to draw conclusions from given definitions of facts, definitions of property. So we're going to be given information, we're going to use that information to draw conclusions, whereas inductive was you looked at it yourself and drew the conclusion. All right, so inductive reasoning, uh, if the given facts are true, and this is the biggest thing, if they're true, then you apply the logic. If they're not true, then we can't apply the logic and we'd say it's not true. So we're going to use detachment as one. So, a law of detachment is an if-then statement. If uh, x squared equals, all right, if, yeah, if x squared equals 4, then uh, x equals 2. That would be an if-then statement. So then we're going to see is if, if they're both true, if the hypothesis and conclusion are true. So we'll go through. Then we'll go through the law of syllogism. The law of syllogism is an if-then statement, but it's going to take us through a series, all right? If Sue, here's one, if Sue is taller than Jane and Jane is taller than Joe, right, then what, would, what can we conclude from there? So we're going to have three statements, or, whereas in a law of detachment you just have one statement, just an if then. So here's an example, law of detachment, if then statement, if I get over 90% I will receive an A, I got a 96%, therefore I got an A. That's the law of detachment, an if-then statement. Law of uh, syllogism, if I oversleep, I will miss the bus. If I miss the bus, I will have to walk to school. Again, you th see three statements, if, if, if. All right? If I oversleep, or excuse me, so conjecture. If I oversleep, I will have to walk to school. So we take basically the first part, if I oversleep, and connect it to the last part. I will have to walk to school. As long as they're all true. If there's any part that breaks down that's not true, then we can't use it. So let's go ahead and go through a couple of examples of each one. So we'll go through two examples. I want you to write down the examples. Right? Yes, I understand. A lot of writing. But I want you to write it down so you can understand. So we're going to use a lot of detachment. So an if-then statement. We want to check to see if the hypothesis and conclusion is true. So if the side lengths of a triangle are 5, 12, and 13, then the area is 30 centimeters squared. The area of uh, PQR is 30 centimeters. All right? So this is our statement. The area is 30 centimeters. Okay? So then our conclusion would be that the side lengths would have to be 5, 12, and 13. We want to check. Is this section true? Can we draw this conclusion? Well, you have to go ahead and think, well, how do I find, okay, how do I find out what, um, how do I find area? Area is, of a triangle is half the base times the height. So is there any other one that you could use, any other side lengths that you could use where you could get 30 centimeters squared? Well, and you could start thinking about, well, half the, so you could go, um, you could go 6 and 10, side lengths of 6, 10, and then you could come up with this third side. All right, 6, 10 would be different than 5 and 12, but would it still work? The answer is yes. So, it does not form. We can't use the law of detachment for this because this isn't true. If the side lengths of a triangle are 5, 12, and 13, the area of a triangle is 30 centimeters. So, we can't, the area of our triangle is 30 centimeters. We can't conclude that it's 5, 12, and 13 because there's other side lengths that could work. Next one, same thing, law of detachment. If a student passes his classes, then the student is eligible to play sports. All right? Ross passed his class, therefore our conclusion, what we would say, is that Ross is eligible to play sports. Now, are this, is this statement true? Is there any problems with it? Is there any other way he could be eligible without passing the class? The answer would be no. So, that would be I know, quite a, a good conclusion. Uh, a good conclusion to make. We could say, yep, that's true. 
Law of syllogism. Now we're going to have three statements as we go through. We've got to check the truth of each one of them. So if a figure is a kite, then it is a quadrilateral. If the figure is a quadrilateral, then it is a polygon. So quadrilateral, first, what quad means is it's a four-sided figure. So if I have a kite, so if I have this kite, then it is a four-sided figure, which is true. If it's a four-sided figure, then it is a polygon. Okay, that's true as well. So we're okay as far as that polygon just means many sides. It has many sides to it. Yeah, four-sided figure has sides to it. If a figure is a kite, then it is a polygon. So can I conclude this? So anytime we use a law of syllogism, we're going to start with the first and conclude to the last statement. Okay, so we're going to use if-then statement. If-then. Then it's a kite. So if it is a kite, if it is a four-sided figure, it, then it is a polygon. Is that true? Is there any other four-sided figure that would be considered a polygon? Well, you have a rectangle, you have a square, uh, we could go a rhombus, we could go, there's multiple figures. So we can't conclude this because not both of them. This isn't the only figure that would do that. So we would say, no, this is false, and you would give an example. You could say a square, a rectangle. Anything like that. Right? If a number is divisible by 2, then it is even. If a number is even, then it is an integer. So, if a number is divisible by 2, then it is an integer. Again, to do the law of syllogism, you start with the first statement, and then you end with the last statement. Then it is. So, if a number is an integer, then it is divisible by 2. Is that true? If a number, an integer is just positive or negative any whole number as we look at it. So negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, and so on, up to infinity. Okay? So an integer is just any whole number. Alright? Is that true? Is that always going to be true? If a number is an integer, then it's divisible by 2. Well, what about 1, or 3, or 5, or negative 7? Any odd number wouldn't work. With this conclusion. So um, we'd say there, that the problem fall occurs, that we can't, con we can't conclude this. Okay? So then you come here. If two angles are congruent, then they have the same measure. So our con conjecture is here's our con conjecture that an, uh, we have these two angles, they're congruent. So here's our statement that angle BAC and angle CAD, they're congruent. So we'd say their measure is the same. BAC equals CAD. Alright? So our, our hypothesis, if two angles are congruent, two angles are congruent, so that's what's given to us. So is this true? If two angles are congruent, they have the same measure? Yes. So what um, if we looked at this would be true, the conjecture is valid by what? The law of syllogism or the law of detachment? Since it's just an if-then statement, it'd be the law of detachment. Let's go through one more. Last one. So, this is quite a bit, but if we have a, if, if 90 degrees, all right, if, it's, if we have an angle that's greater than 90 and less than 180, it's obtuse. If it's obtuse, it's not a right angle. Okay, any problem, with any of those. Right? So here's our statement. Um, so what we do is we'd start with the beginning, this part. If our degree, if our if our angle, measure of our angle S, is greater than 90 and less than 180, then it is a then it's not a right angle. Any problems with this right here? No, if it's between, if it's greater than 90, less than 180, it's not a right angle. Right angle needs to be 90. So we're okay with that. Right? So here's your loss. Okay, so I don't want to go through it. But you go through here and you go through each statement, you check each statement, make sure each statement's okay. Right? So is this conjecture true? Yeah, yeah, it's valid. By the law of what? How many statements are there? There's three statements. So we'd say the law of syllogism. So that's the lesson. So we have a law of detachment, just an if-then statement. And the law of syllogism is a three, three statements that we're, we're going to work with. 
Okay? Law of syllogism, when we make our conjecture, it's just taking the beginning, the beginning opening part, and attaching it to the last part. 